All right, what is going on everyone and welcome back to another Black Desert video. My name is John and today I wanted to talk about beginner to end game gear progression. Now I've made a video of this in the past. Some of you guys may have seen it, some of you haven't, but over time they actually update things in the game and make things easier. So I figured I'd do an update for this video as well as um, talk about like some of the updates and changes. So whether you're a brand new player or you're like, I don't know, 290 AP plus. Um, I'd like to share my thoughts and opinions on how I go I go about uh, gear progression and how you guys should do it as well. So let's start with the beginning. If you are a brand new player, what you're going to be doing is gearing from a seasonal server. Or you don't have to be on a seasonal server. It just has to be a seasonal character. And... If you're new, basically the way the new system works is uh, at the main menu, they give you like those season tokens or whatever they're called. And then you make a season character. And the way it's going to work is you're going to have beginner gear that you use those uh, little orb black stones that they're actually going to be changing in the future to just making, you know how they have the uh, armor stone and then the weapon stone. I think they're just going to combine that all in one, which is I think overall a good thing because... There's a lot of different enhancing materials that you need and just to condense it and less clutter in the game. I think overall that's a good thing. So, um, this is actually my scholar class or character. And you know these stones that you get right here just by playing the game, doing whatever. You're going to be using this to enhance uh, Naru gear. And getting that to pen is really easy. All you have to do is just click it until it goes to pen. And then you convert your Naru gear to Tuvala. Um, after you get to Tuvala gear, your gear is going to look something like this. Um, it, obviously, once you convert it, it's going to be like at uh, Pry. And then at Pry, you just click it all the way to Pen. And so one thing they changed with the re recent season was gearing Tuvala, or just enhancing it in general, has been so much easier than it has always been because... If you've ever done enhancing, you guys know it downgrades at certain points, right? Um, back then, it would downgrade all the way back to Pry. Now, the lowest you can downgrade is that Try level. So, getting the Season gear or Tuvala all the way to Pen is very easy. And I think all of you guys can do it. If you need some examples on what fail stacks to use and everything, I'll leave a link in the description to my Seasonal playlist. And you can copy what I did. Or you can just do whatever you want. It doesn't really bother me. As long as you don't cron stone anything from Tuvala. Or definitely, please do not cron stone any Tuvala gear or accessories. Trust me when I say you'll need them later. And just holding on to it now is a nice thing. So, yeah. At end game, or even not even end game. Just like once you become uh, geared enough to get out of seasons and upgrade boss gear. You'll need cron stones eventually. So... In terms of uh, how you should gear up in Tuvala, so depending on how you play, like do you like grinding? Do you just like questing? Um, it's very easy, no matter what. And I'll talk about this one later. I just we'll talk about that later. But I would always recommend gearing your weapons first or enhancing those first because that'll allow you to grind different spots. Obviously, more AP is better because you just try new things. And you clear faster, get more trash loot, make more silver and everything. So I would always recommend going for your main hand weapon first. The reason why is because it gives you a lot of accuracy. And whether you want to do PvP in the future or you just like grinding, um, the accuracy will always be nice, even in like higher end spots later on. Followed by your awakening weapon. Because not only does the Awakening Weapon, um, some of the AP goes to your main hand. Not like any visible numbers, but it's like, I think it's what, 30% is transferred to your main hand. It's really weird to explain to people, but I'm pretty sure if you just looked at your sh uh, stats sheet, you can check it out. And then the last one would obviously be your um, offhand and then, as for the gear, once we at, are at Tuvala, doesn't really matter. You should be able to get them all to pen anyway. Um, I believe if you're following the seasonal 
like the like battle pass thingy it makes you enhance a necklace first followed by everything else so in my opinion enhance the ones that give you the most ap first so in my opinion that would be the necklace uh followed by either rings or belt keep in mind at level 58 and 59 you get a free pen to follow ring and necklace so you only have to make one technically of each of them and i think that's overall good and yeah once you're at full pen to vala this is where the game kind of begins um at your point you're probably around like 240 to 250 ap depending on how many adventure journals you have done so we'll talk about how to gear progress after seasonals as well all right so next we have let's say you are graduating season your gear should look something similar to this uh, you're going to have a pen to Vala offhand, then you convert that to a boss gear, but we'll talk about that. <clears throat> so, let me see. I probably have a character somewhere with uh, sort of close gear to, like, ra random boss gear. Uh, I guess we'll just use this one as an example, because this is what it might look like. So, as your first time graduating seasons, you get to convert all your gear, all your pen to Vala, into tet boss gear and you can get these gears whether it's off the central market or you do the boss and enhance it yourself or you get it from obviously the conversion their season jatina and so you'll get two different choices of um like different pieces so for example red nose and dim tree uh, i would personally go red nose these days because if you plan on uh capricing it and getting it to pen yourself it is slightly cheaper and requires less capra stones once you're at pen level, but that's kind of more of the end game stuff. So I would honestly just go red nose. As for the helmet, you have two options of a griffin and Gaieth. And uh, let me show you what they look like on the market so I can just show it to you easier. All right, so you're going to have two options, the griffin's helmet and the Gaieth. The difference is when you wear it, you get 100 HP into your total HP pool with the Gaieth, or 5% all resistances to your Griffin Helm. Now, your ultimate goal would be to upgrade it to Labresca, but once again, these are endgame items. In my opinion, the Griffin's Helmet is better than the Gaieth's, because the 5% all resistances is good for both PvP and PvE, so if you're grinding, uh, if you grind a spot where you're getting like knocked down, or stiffened, or floated, whatever, uh, that 5% Will probably help you a little bit more than the 100 extra hp pool and that also goes the same for pvp at higher end pvp whoever gets cc'd or knocked down first generally loses the fight just because uh the, the amount of damage output these days for anything is pretty high so i just value the resistances higher than the hp yes i understand sometimes it feels like a meme but trust me i think it is better so next we have um, the, what is it? Lieber's gloves or the Beg's gloves. So let me show you the two options once again. Actually, let me just, uh, yes. So we have these two options, Beg's gloves and Lieber's. Chances are most people should be choosing Beg's gloves, especially if you're a new player. Um, Lieber's is the evasion one, which evasion is technically better than DR, but it's also one of those end game things where, uh, it's kind of like a beginner trap. If you try to build it too early, you're basically still going to get one shotted by most people who have gear. So let me show you where people get confused. So if you look at this at, I don't know, I guess tet level, you're going to see the DP where it says 55 DP, that number is going to be reflected over here in your DP. So this is where beginners get confused. And then if you see this one at Tet level, it says 56. So obviously as a new player, 56 is higher than 55. However, the stats you want to look at <clears throat> are right under that 56 where it says evasion and damage reduction. And so the way you would choose or the way you know if your class is DR or evasion is if you open up your skills and you know under your passives right here do your passives give evasion if so you are an evasion class 
If it doesn't, you are a DR class. That's the general rule. Obviously, some classes can build hybrid. Some classes can build both. But that's just a general rule. And if you need help, like you don't know what your class or how to build your class, feel free to leave it in the comments or just ask me and I'll help you point you in the right direction. So either way, it's pretty obvious. I think most of you guys can figure it out yourself. But if you can't, I'm happy to let you know where to go. And so in the shoes option, we have two things, the Urgons and the Muskins. The Muskins is the equivalent of like the Lieber, which is the evasion route, and Urgon is the DR route. So once again, the same thing applies here. People are probably going to get confused. If you look at it at Tet, it gives 74. And if you look at it at Tet here, this one is 72. So people are going to be like, oh, bigger number, get that one. In this case, the Urgons does give more, so it makes sense to get this one but once again evasion is better at higher end but you also need a lot of gear so it's kind of like it scales higher at the high end and as a new player just dr for pve is for the most part better and your ultimate goal would be getting to add to our shoes eventually but that's a thing we'll talk about in a bit so when it comes to upgrading gear and your gear looks I guess more or less like this with Tuvala and everything. Um, how I would choose the weapons, right? So obviously when you get to convert them all for the first time, then that includes weapons, I believe, and they're all going to be at Tet. So you're probably wondering, how do you pick which one you want to enhance first? And the answer, honestly, I still think it's main hand followed by awakening and then offhand. Even if you are playing awakening as well, just because the accuracy bonus is nice. But it also depends on the market cost of it as well. Like, if your goal is to get a pen thing, um, there's a quest to get Jatina's accessories and uh, weapons and armors. I actually have a video of that. I'll leave it in the description. It's basically Jatina's pen accessory and weapons and armors. What I did in that video was basically show you how to do it, how to get every single material. And I spent like six and a half billion silver doing it just for a video to show you how it's done step by step. I didn't even need the weapon. So it's something uh, if you want to watch it, cool. And if not, you do what you want. So that yeah, that's how you go about choosing the weapon. <clears throat> um, there are a few different routes people go when it comes to weapons. So I guess it doesn't really matter what weapon. I guess I'll just show you. There's Zarka. There's often. And then there's Black Star. The Black Star is the ultimate endgame goal for everyone. And in my opinion, I would always choose the Zarka uh, over the Often simply because um, it gives more accuracy, which is better for both PvP and PvE. I guess it depends on where you're grinding in PvE, but mostly PvP. And there was a point when Often used to be better than Zarka, but it's at a small bracket or like a small gear space nowadays to the point where even if you got one at like Tether Pen, you would be replacing it in about like a week or two. So like you might as well get something for the long run because if you have to sell it back to the market, you're going to be losing a lot in taxes. So you might as well just get one that you'll use for a while. And then when it's time to sell it, it doesn't feel as bad, right? So, when you get to convert, you're probably going to have a Tet Black Star or <clears throat> Tet Zarka followed by the Black Star. And the way I would um, go about boss weapons nowadays in terms of Jatina is when we made that video, to make a weapon, it costs six and a half billion silver to uh, basically guarantee it with no RNG. If you can buy a pen for under six and a half billion, then it's better to buy it off the market than make it, which I believe um, is basically all of them nowadays. So let's see. Man, back in the day when I bought my dandy uh, pen for the first time, well, actually I made all my dandies, but back in the day when I was still using it, these are like 15 billion. So newer players these days, you can get things so easily and it's not even a problem. But yeah, the way I know this is because I've gone through the years and stages of 
all these weapons myself. Um, so yeah, when it comes to when you think you should upgrade into like a Tet Black Star or a Tet or something God Eye weapon, is when that's the next cheapest upgrade for you. And we'll talk about that in terms of like which order to progress your gear in like a circle. Um, so I remember writing this down. I have some notes over here, by the way. So let's say your gear looks like you have all boss gear and then you have Tet weapons, right? So you're probably thinking, which one should I go for pen first? In my opinion, you should always upgrade the weapons before the armors because having higher AP allows you to grind higher end spots. Therefore, you're clearing faster, making more silver to either buy or enhance your own gear. And then the weapons are really nice. Then the armors are just nice to ha have as well. So when you have accessories, you should probably keep them at Tuvala until you get the Jatina's guaranteed pen one. And the guaranteed pen gives you one of three choices. They're actually going to be adding a second one in the future so that you can get two guaranteed Jatina pens. So let me show you what they are right now. So you're going to have the option of a pen crescent ring. This is really good because right now it's about 50 billion. 50 billion to a new player or an intermediate level player, just most people in general, is kind of a lot. So you're going to want to get this. This is also the highest AP for... Um, all the way up until you're like thinking about getting um, Deborekas or upgrading past Crescents. So in my opinion, to most players, I would recommend the Pen Crescent Ring. And the next option you have is either a Pen Tungrad or a Pen Narc Earring. I think Tungrad Earrings are the worst of the three choices because the AP to... Like, the, uh, like, I don't know, just AP to cost value? Kind of not so great. So, if you look at this one, it gives 17 AP. And it's like, that's not bad. But when you're thinking, oh, I could get a Crescent, and that's 20 AP. You see where that comes in? And then, you have an option to get a Narc Earring. Now, this one is actually good, because it's a little hybrid of both of them. And so, that gives AP and DP. But the bonus to this, it gives extra damage to Kama Sylvian. So like if you're grinding in Grana or just the Kama Sylvia region in general, um, that adds AP. So technically, if you're grinding in a certain spot, you get more AP. And damage to certain types of enemies is one to one and AP. So like essentially, if you're grinding, I don't know, anywhere in Kama Sylvia against those kind of mobs, you would be have like 15 plus eight. So that's technically the best one, in my opinion, but at certain spots. Also, it allows you to grind with the extra 5 DP, whether that puts you in a new bracket or not. Um, it gives you a little bit of an extra safe things, just in case you're trying something new and you don't know if you're going to get uh, one-shotted or anything. So in my opinion, this is actually what I chose, the Narc Earring, just because there's a lot of good grind spots in Kama Sylvia area. And sometimes they use it, and but most of the time, like we'll talk about these like end game stuff later on. So, do I think Jatina uh, weapons and armors are worth it these days? I think the armors might still be worth it. Weapons are definitely not worth making, <clears throat> and of course, you should be doing the daily quest for the accessory until you get it. And the items and materials that you'll get are. Uh, let me see if I can find it. What are they called? Old Moon Alchemy Catalysts. Um, you just combine a lot of them and eventually you get the thingies to like upgrade. So they're going to have another one in the near future. Look out for that. <clears throat> Try to get the first one until then and get the second one. Most people, so what I would recommend is get the Crescent Ring and or the narc earring you can swap them out infinitely so let's say you chose one of them but you want to choose something else i think it just costs a little bit of silver or materials and then you can just swap them infinitely so it's not a big deal if you think you chose the wrong one it's whatever just swap it out to whatever you need um next thing we have is we talked about going from 
like Zarkas and Offens to Black Stars. Now, when you should upgrade is when you think you actually need it. So back in the day, we didn't have their stat sheet page over here. So we just kind of had to do some mental math and figure it out. And the extra AP against monsters at like Tet level, even, even try is pretty good. So extra AP against monsters is one to one AP. So it actually is a huge difference in overall damage output. So I know there are people that say getting your Zarka to Capras 20 versus getting a pen black star the black star is significantly better still in pve um if you are exclusively a pvp'er it doesn't really matter as much but i mean like you, you just still want to have the nicest things right for everything so <clears throat> i think whenever your next cheapest upgrade is like i don't know how much do black stars cost now like 12 to 15 billion whenever that's your next cheapest upgrade is when you should upgrade it um, in terms of, like, gear, the way I did it, because this is actually how gear progression worked if you weren't starting today. So when you had the boss gear armors, the first thing that came out was a Fallen God armor, followed by a Labresca helmet, then followed by a Dawn Gloves, and then the recent thing that came out, like, last month was the Ator shoes. So when we talked about boss gear, you have to get him to Capras 10 at pen level, and then you grind for a flame, or you can just buy it. Uh, I believe you just look at it. <laughs> see. Yeah, so these things, uh, you get this ember. I think that the best thing to go for first is the one you can get first. So this flame thingy from Land of the Morning Light, if you have a Capras 10 glove... I also think you have to do the entire Land of the Morning Light story first. Let me just make that clear. So that's like a 300 quest line chain, which is kind of annoying. It took me a lot of hours, and I rushed that day one. Um, but it's one you can actually get right now off the market. So, with that said, the way I had to progress it was straight up in a certain order. Now, whichever one you guys can get first is the one you should get. Um, obviously, at Tor Shoes is the newest one and the most expensive. So this would still be your last upgrade. And I don't know how much it is on your server. I don't even think console has it. I'm not even sure. But yeah, that's like whatever is the cheapest option. You go upgrade that one first. Um, you get those all to Capris 10 and then you're good. So let's say right now. You have either Capris 10 pen gear, 10 pen boss gear, or like a base Labresca or no, like Fallen God armors, right? And your gear or your weapons are either Tet Blackstar or like a Capris something um, boss weapons. You're probably thinking, how do I go about enhancing or getting accessories? And what is my next upgrade from there? So at this point, you're probably within like the 270 AP area, 260. And here's what I would do. This is one thing they added very recently that I haven't personally done yet, but you guys can do it too. In the new Ulakita area, they if you do the entire quest line, it gives you a Ator's Power Stone. This is your Alchemy Stone. And it actually is pretty decent. Like when I look at the stats and compare it to like a high-end Vel's heart um yeah these are pretty good so this is a free one just do the quest line and it's like it's not as good as Vel's but it's free and you're not spending like 25 billion silver on it so I think this is a very good upgrade to get early on and I actually don't know if you have to do the stories in order because like I do them as they come out but I don't know about how newer players go about doing it so, in my opinion, when it comes to accessories itself, um, what you should do is look at how much AP it gives versus how much things cost. So, I use this example a lot. I think it might have equalized a little bit, but let me just show you an example. So, if we look at rings, we looked at this before. A pen crescent ring is 50 billion silver. 
Keep in mind, it gives 20 AP. That's the importance that you want to look. 20 AP, 50 billion silver. Now, if we look at a Bassy belt, which is another thing that you should get. This also gives 20 AP. And, like, you can get it. I guess the price equalized, because, like, if someone's going to list it, it's going to be relatively even. But whichever one you can get for the cheapest price... I would definitely go for that one first because, you know, for the same stats, if you can save like 5 billion silver, it's just the way to go. And then, um, so in my opinion, I'm pretty sure that the necklace is probably the cheapest option, followed by belt. And then you get one uh, accessory for free from Jatina, which I told you guys should pick the crescent ring. Um, so you only have one slot here and then you're working on two earrings. And then, when they give out the second Jatina's pen, I would probably choose the same thing. So, whether you chose, like, a Narc earring or another Crescent ring, you can have two of them. So, let's say these slots are done so far. Um, you would want to go for the necklace and the belt first, in my opinion. And then the earrings are always last, because there are a lot of good options for, uh, like, what you plan on doing. Are you a defensive player? Are you a glass cannon hybrid? You want, do you want to build more accuracy? So, in my opinion, uh, the ones you should go for last are earrings, because there's a few options, and also probably the most expensive ones. So, um, let me just show you what I would do in order in terms of accessories for each slot. We talked about the rings being the crescents as a baseline, right? So, here is the entry-level accessories. You start with crescent rings at pen, then you have two... Uh, actually, you have a few choices. If you want more survivability, the Eye of the Ruin is the same thing as a Pen Crescent. However, it gives more HP per ring, so it'd be like 130 HP. Uh, don't look at mine, because I have cups on it, which is extra stats, which you guys can get as well. But in terms of the base one, the Eye of the Ruin is the same AP, just extra health on top of it, and a little bit more expensive. The next route we have is Tungrad Ring, which is um, the very expensive one, in my opinion. But it does give one extra AP. And, like, if you are building straight up AP, uh, this is the way to go. Back in the day, I bought this for, like, 80 to 100 billion. Obviously, the price went up, like, over a year ago. So, let's keep that in mind. And then this is the Accuracy Route. So this is more for accuracy is more for PvPers, but obviously you still need it. Um, so if you're PvPing currently, the ominous ring is the best like AP to accuracy trade-off. And it's things could change, but as of right now, the ominous is the way to go. But we'll talk about everything else as well. So here we have multiple options. You're probably wondering. Layton, Ogre, Tungrad Ring. These are all the exact same stats. Three different items. Why they did that? I don't know. But either way, when it comes to going for a Tet or Pen, you get the one that's the cheapest. Because Layton and Ogre, they are the exact same thing. Just different items. Stat-wise, exactly the same. Tungrad is the same as these two, but they give Black Spirit Rage on it, which is more of a PvP thing in my opinion. So, I mean, if it's cheaper or the same price, obviously go for the Tungrad ring. But if one is more expensive than the other, just get whichever one you can get first. Um, Lunar Necklace is the accuracy one that we talked about. Kind of like Ominous, but for your necklace slot. And then we have Debereka, which is the high-end endgame item. It's straight-up AP, and uh, it's very hard to get. So, for most people... Debaraka is a very endgame goal, and then you just have like an Ogre, Layton, and Tungrad until then. Uh, belts. Entry level would be a Bassi belt. Voltara is the equivalent of the Eye of the Ruins in terms of like just uh, survivability and HP on top of it. So that's basically the same. Tungrad is the one AP higher for your glass cannon players. And Turo's belt is the accuracy version. Tabex is kind of a gimmick meme one. Um, I don't think there's any real good use for it. So just keep that in mind. It's like, it's 
interesting to look at, but I don't think there's any practical use for it, realistically. Uh, Debereka is an endgame full-on AP one that is very hard. I'm actually going for that myself right now, but it just takes time. And the reason why I talked about earrings being the last slot is because there's a lot of options. So you know how you can get a Tungrad and Narc earring from Jatina's? Um, they do a lot of different things. So what do people start with for the most part? I think realistically, most people will either have a Narc from the free one or a Tungrad from a free one. And when your goal is to upgrade, you're either going to have a Vaha or a, a Distortion earring. These are the exact same thing. So Black Distortion and Vaha's Dawn. Uh, how you get them is one by grinding either Star's End or the other like LVS spots, but those are less relevant. Or you can get the Vahas by doing the Adaraxian dungeons at a rate. So uh, realistically, if you want one, Distortions are probably going to be easier to get, but it doesn't really matter. Whichever one looks nicer to you, you can't even see earrings in this game. Uh, like non-cosmetics. Dawns are the accuracy option. And Debarekas are... This is kind of like in a weird spot right now. Because pen distortions are the highest AP. But you also trade off DP to get the highest uh, option. Debarekas right here are just AP. But there's no downside to it. And right now... If you use three Debereka pieces for the set effect, you get 12 AP. So even three at Tet is better than like um, some other options that I had. So like, for example, I have a Pend Ogre, a Voltara, and like a Tet Debo. If I had all three Debarekas at even Tet level, that would just significantly be better just because of the set effect. And I'm actually working on my Debarekas right now. Obviously, if it went and I could actually get them easily, I wouldn't have this problem. But anyway, uh, there's a lot of options for earrings. If you need help with uh, figuring out which route you want to go, I'm happy to answer it, whether it's through Discord or leave it in the comments. So a few more things I wanted to talk about before we wrap up this video. We talked about weapons, armors, and accessories for the most part. Basically, the rule of thumb is which ones can you get that gives the most stats for the least amount of money and you get those upgrades. We talked about the alchemy stone. Um, obviously do the quest line until then. But if you don't and you're a beginner, here's what I would do. Where are they? Um, oh my god, I just I lost it. Okay, come. Wait. Wait, these are magic crystals, not alchemy. So as an entry level, these are not too bad because having these stats when you use them is better than not using them. But here's the thing. For most people, if you're doing seasonals and even non-seasonals up until the quest line where you get them, you're most likely going to be using these spirit stones that they give you quite often for more monster damage. That's fine. And then just do the Ulakita quest line, get the Ator's Power Stone, and you're good to go until you can get a Vel. So the last thing we have to talk about is um, artifacts and light stones. So for the most part, there is no right or wrong answer on how you guys go about building this. But for the most part, accuracy, when in doubt, this is what I tell people. If you don't know how to build your artifacts this offensive defensive and like utility stuff if you don't know what you're doing just get extra ap against monsters if you are a pvp -er. and if you are a pv or well, i guess pve -er, -er, you get monster ap if you are a pvp -er, uh you might want to get like the melee ranged or magic ap depending on what class you play and if you don't know what class you play i don't know what to tell you like if you don't know if your class is magic or not you go to your sheet tab right here, and it'll tell you the type of class you are. So, for example, I play a Dark Knight, I'm Magic, and we would use Magic AP. And yes, Warrior is melee AP. Just someone has asked me that before. I think it was a meme. But just to clarify it. And then you get your artifacts in here as well. Uh, I actually have a video that I talked about the artifacts, beginner to endgame. 
artifacts and lightstone combos. I'll leave that in the description just so I don't make this video too long. If you want to watch that, cool. Uh, otherwise, you can Google the artifacts and lightstone combo and pick one that works for you. It's not a big deal. And um, yeah, at some point, you're probably going to be wondering about crystals. I do have a video for beginner to end game crystals. When you should get them is when you think your gear progress is slowing down to the point where you should start taking crystal upgrades more seriously. So I have a very specific and more detailed video of what I use for both PvE and PvP. A little bit of life skilling included and people who are just trying to level up fast as well. So this was a video where I talked about everything and I'll leave that in the description if you're interested as well. So what is the best thing for you to do? Whatever next upgrade you have, is that the cheapest amount of silver? Does it give you the most stats? Get that item. Um, otherwise, I think the hardest part for most people is going to be enhancing it yourself. Um, but if you can buy it off the market, generally it, it's a good idea to do that. There are very few things that I think are worth uh, making yourself and some things you have to make. Like, for example, if you're going for Debos at an end game, those are something you're going to have to make yourself. Otherwise, if you're just going for like the uh, Fallen God armors, I think it is reasonable to just buy the straight up thing at like Duo or something and enhance it yourself. Simply because you can skip the entire like Capris 10 RNG pro or not really RNG, but like can you buy all of that off the market? So I think for the most part, it equalizes up until Duo. Then after try and tet, uh, that's where things get a little sketch and you might want to have to uh, make sure you know what you're doing after that. And um, yeah, they also added the free tet uh, black star if you get to level 61. And I think that's overall a good thing. So by this point, you just get a free tet black star. Pretty good. And then you get a free alchemy stone. It's not as good as Vels, but it's still pretty good. And uh, double Jatinas for rings. I think that's like basically four slots already done. And then once you're at seasonal and upgrade from there, you're good to go. So with that said, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope this was informative and very helpful. Um, yes, I know that was a lot of knowledge. And if you still need help with anything in my discord, I have a gear channel. So if you guys want to just post a screenshot and be like, hey, where do I go from here? I'm happy to point you in the right direction. Or you guys can, uh, I guess, look up another guide. But hopefully it helped. Um, if you are new to the channel, first and foremost, welcome. I make videos for beginners, returning players, and people who are just looking to get better at this game. I've been playing this game for almost eight years. And back in my day, I didn't have any guides. And I actually had to do gear progression, I guess, as gear came out. Whereas nowadays, people can just like look at a screenshot and be like, okay, I want this next. I'm getting it. So, yeah, hopefully it helped, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. Peace.